This is EE300 Linear Circuit Analysis 2, Module 5, Video 2, The Ideal Transformer. This video will review what we've done previously, we'll look at the Ideal Transformer and some examples, and then we'll summarize what we've done. So review. Previously, we saw a uh, couple coils and mutual induction. So couple coils where you have um, a pair of inductors that are where the field from one uh, inductor interferes or is picked up by the field by the other inductor. And we found that the device characteristic for this four terminal two port device is that the voltage at um, the input side, which is called the primary windings, uh, is the L1, the self induction, times di dt, uh, the, the di1, the current through that winding, uh, plus a, a mutual induction term m times di2 dt, the derivative of the current through the other terminal pair. m uh, is the mutual inductance. Um, and there's a plus minus there, and that's uh, indicated by the dot convention. If the two dots are at the same terminals, uh, or, so if plus V2 is defined as the same uh, dot as plus V1, uh, then the voltage adds here. If the dot on the uh, uh, secondary coil were on the other end, uh, then that would be a minus sign. Uh, V2 has the same form, except it's the M times di1 dt, plus L2 times DI2 DT. Again, the plus or minus on the M depending on the dot convention, whether they're on the same side or on opposite sides. So let's work and look at how we did an example here uh, for a couple of coils. Let's say that the voltage source is 200 times the sine of 400T uh, volts. And so let's find V2 when the second terminal pair is open circuit. So if it's open circuit, the voltage, I, the current I2 is zero, and so DI2 is gonna be zero also. And if di2 is equal to zero, then v1, um, the the first this primary uh, inductor coil just reverts to the ordinary uh, inductor relationship. v1 equals l d i d t, and so di1 d t must be v1 over l1. Similarly, on the second one, v2 must be purely since there's no current uh, i2, v2 must be purely due to the mutual inductance and due to the current uh, i1. And so V2 is M DI1 DT, but DI1 we already found was V1 over L1. Uh, and so uh, that must be M times V1 over L1. And then we just plug in the numbers. Uh, M is uh, uh, 2 millihenries. Uh, uh, L1 was 10 millihenries. Uh, and the input was 200 sine 400 T. And so we get uh, 40 times sine 400 T volts as the output. Uh, the other thing we saw is that stored energy must be non-negative. So we have both the self-stored energy on each of the inductors, so the usual one-half Li square uh, from the uh, primary inductor, the primary coil, the secondary coil, but then there's also energy related to, to the mutual inductance, inductance and that's uh, M I1 I2. And uh, this can only be non-negative as long as L1, L2 is greater than M squared. And, uh, that the ratio of m over the square root of l1 l2 is called the coupling coefficient or k and so when k is small you have very little coupling and when k is big you have uh, big meaning one you have lots of coupling and this can be you can build these devices so that you attain sort of 0.99 uh, coupling and it's almost effect it's effectively one so the ideal transformer in the ideal transformer, we're going to take advantage in, in, of this uh, coupling issue and use perfect coupling. And so in perfect coupling, the product of L1 and L2 is M squared. And then here's our device characteristics for the mutual inductance, a couple coils. And we're going to factor L1 out of the first, uh, the, out of the V1 equation, and we're going to factor plus or minus M out of the V2 equation. And when we do that, uh, we notice that because of this relationship in uh, perfect coupling between uh, M over L1 and L2 over M, those have to be the same thing for L1, L2 to equal M squared. And it also turns out that that ratio is the same thing as N2, uh, the number of windings in the secondary coil, over N1, the number of windings in the primary coil. So we're going to take the ratio of V2 to V1 and recognize that this term in parentheses and both of them is the same thing because of this equivalence between M over L1 and L2 over M. And since those are the same thing, they're going to cancel each other out in the ratio. Now for this to exist, DI, uh, DT on, and DI, DI1 and DI2 needs to be non-zero. I mean, there's got to be some non-zero current in here someplace. DI2 could be zero, DI1 could be zero, but one of the two has to be non-zero or else there's nothing here to have a ratio of. 
Um, so we take the ratio here and we see again that, that this will in fact cancel out since uh, L2 over M and M over L1 are the same thing. And when we do that, we see that the ratio of V2, the voltage at the secondary terminal pair, to the uh, V1, the voltage at the primary coil terminal pair, is plus or minus N2 over N1, the ratio of the number of windings in the secondary to the number of windings in the primary. And we're going to call that little n the turns ratio. So again, it's the ratio of the uh, number of turns in the secondary relative to the number of turns in the primary. And so we won't denote the number of turns, actually. We just denote the turns ratio. When you go to buy a transformer, you just buy the turns ratio. And it's given as 1 to n. n could be bigger than 1, so you have more windings on the secondary side. n could be less than 1, uh, between 0 and 1, when you have more windings on the primary side. Um, and when n is bigger than 1, then the size of V2 is going to be bigger than the size of V1. And that's called a step-up transformer. Uh, when n is less than 1, that's called a step-down transformer. You're making the voltage on the other side smaller. So let's see how this works. Uh, we have an ideal transformer with a, a n1 of 250 turns and an n2 of 25 turns. Let's find the voltages and currents uh, when the Vs of t is over here is 120 sine 377 uh, t volts. That's a, a, I think that's 2 pi 60 uh, volts. Or, or 2 pi 60 uh, is the ratio there, the, the frequency. So it's a 60 hertz uh, current and 2 pi 60 is a 377, I think, off the top of my head. Um, and the load resistance over here is 50 ohms. So the turns ratio is, 250, is, is 25 to 250, which is 1 to 10. Uh, and V1 is given as 120 sine 377T, so V2 is N times V1. It's a step-down transformer because the secondary has fewer windings than the primary. So we get one-tenth of 120, or 12 times sine 377T volts. So this, uh, and then the current over here on the, on the uh, secondary side, and it's the current going into the secondary terminal there, so that's the negative of the Ohm's law current. So that's V2 over RL, and we have a 50 ohm resistor there. So that's a 0.24, excuse me, uh, sine 370T, 377T uh, amps there. Uh, what about the current on the other side? Well, in perfect magnetic coupling, uh, and we need the other condition that there's no power loss. I mean, so, you know, there will always be some resistive power losses here, but assume those can be kept small. And if that's the case, the power absorbed on the primary side has to equal the power absorbed on the secondary side. That is, I put power in on the primary side, I get the same power out on the secondary side. So um, V1 of T times I1 of T, that's the power in on the primary side, plus V2 of T times I2 of T on the secondary side. Those have to equal zero. And so I can solve that for I2 over I1, and that has to be the negative of V1 over V2. And so V2 is N times V1, so we have a minus plus minus 1 over n, which gives us minus plus 1 over n as the ratio of currents, or that the current on the secondary side is minus plus 1 over n I1. So if the um, dots are on the same terminals uh, like this, if they're on the same side with the reference voltages, then um, if the current's going positive in the I1 direction, it's going to be positive, it's going to be negative in the I2 direction, which means it's going to be going into the load. It makes, it makes sense that they should have this convention here. Here's the rest of that example. We found previously that I2 was minus 0.24 uh, uh, um, amps. So now when we do minus N times I2, uh, and so that means that I2 is actually 0.24 amps into the resistor. We do minus N times I2, again we get one-tenth of minus 0.24, and we get 0.024 uh, amps on the current on going on over here. Uh, the I1 going into the transformer. We can use this to affect impedance changes. Uh, we often want to match the load, and we don't always even necessarily have a, a match load, and we don't pick a transformer to put in between so that what the source circuit sees gives it uh, the appearance of being the match load. So over here on the uh, secondary side, V2 is N times V1. Uh, the current I2 is minus V2 uh, over RL, so it's the minus the load current. Uh, and that's got to be minus N times V1. And, and so when we, um, by, by putting in the, uh, the uh, V2 from uh, the tr uh, uh, transform relationship, now I1 is going to be minus N times I2. We just found I2, so it's going to be N squared times V1, and then we still got the divided by RL. And so the effective resistance seen here at this terminal pair V1, I1, 
uh, take the ratio of V1 over I1, and we get RL divided by N squared. So if N is a step up, it's N bigger than 1, we're actually looking at a smaller resistor over here. It seems like it's attached to a smaller resistor. It's hooked up to a transformer, but the transformer is going to act like a resistor uh, as long as we put sinusoidal or a time-varying currents through there. And the resistor is going to be divided by N squared. So suppose you have a 50 ohm source MP, uh, your amplifier over here, your feed has a 50 ohm uh, uh, source uh, impedance resistance, and you have a 600 ohm load over here that you'd like to drive with it. How do you get the most amount of power into your load? You want this to look like it's 50 ohms at the terminal pair. So we want uh, RL prime, the VI over I1, V1 over I1 to look like 50 ohms. And that's got to be 600, the load resistance, divided by N squared. And so we need for N squared to be 12 for that to happen. Or N's got to be the square root of 12, which is 3.464. So as long as we pick out our turns ratio of 3.464, um, and these come in, there's some standard places where you have, you know, 50 ohms out and 600 ohms for load or 300 ohms or 8 ohms for speakers and uh, microphones and things like that. So th there's some standard uh, pairings that come up here. So that's it. And so to summarize, the ideal transformer is, uh, makes the output, the secondary voltage, be N times the primary voltage. If the dots are on the same side, it's plus. If the dots are on opposite sides, if so, uh, then it's minus. Uh, and I2 is going to be minus plus I1 of T. When N's greater than 1, it's a step up. The voltage is bigger. The current's smaller. N's less than 1. It's a step down. The voltage is smaller. The current's bigger. The product of the voltage and the current has to equal the product of the voltage and current on the, on the, uh, on the, in the secondary side. The product of the sec voltage and current on the secondary side has to be the negative of the product and voltage of uh, voltage and current on the primary side because um, it's, it's, it's a passive device. It can't produce any extra power, and we hope it doesn't absorb any power. And we saw we could use this for impedance matching. So uh, our next video, there is no next video. This is the end. This is uh, the last one. Um, so this has been Module 5, Video 2, The Ideal Transformer. Uh, and this is EE300 Linear Circuit Analysis 2.